morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Saturday, November the 30th, and our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. We are in week 48 of the year 2024. We're winding down fast. Today is the last day of November. Wow. I still have to find, I'll be picking out the next book for next year very soon. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. Also, my apologies for not posting the devotion for the 27th. Thank you so much, Leslie, for pointing that out to me. I really appreciate that. I'm not sure the 27th was the day before Thanksgiving and there was a lot of running around and things to do and I just had a huge to-do list and I apologize for that being late and now it's driving me nuts because it's out of order on my list. Okay, I'll just have to let that go. Lord, help me to always follow my routine. <laughs> anyway, we're in week 48. Our focus for week 48 is pride, and our devotion today is entitled Healthy Perspective. Our scripture is coming out of the New International Version today. If you have a different translation, please put it in the comments below. Thank you to all of you who have been doing that. It has really enriched my devotional time. I don't know about anybody else, but I really appreciate it. That's very helpful. So our scripture comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. Should be easy to remember. Uh, Romans 1, 2, 3. 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 3. Okay. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. All right. We're not to think so much of ourselves. Scriptures on pride and humility can be misused. God doesn't ever want you to think you're worthless, obviously. He thinks you're so valuable that he sent his son to die in order to save you. So obviously you have great worth. But a healthy perspective on pride and humility is to realize that real and lasting self-worth comes from your identity in Christ. In this world, yes, it's possible to go it alone without Jesus as Lord of your life, but no one can ever truly be fulfilled that way. Just ask anybody who's a multimillionaire. They seem to have gained everything and they still have no fulfillment. It's because they don't have Jesus. They can make it look good from the outside, of course, make it look like they have everything, lifestyles of the rich and famous, okay? But ultimately, this world will amount to as much as the briefest blink of an eye compared to eternity. So remember that your value and status for eternity is based wholly on Jesus. How you humbly follow Jesus determines what your eternal future looks like. To sacrificially put others first in the here and now earns unimaginable rewards for you in heaven forever. Now, that's not to say that you accelerate towards a burnout by doing everything for everyone and never tending to your needs. Okay. Uh, there needs to be balance. And I mentioned it in previous ones. Okay. You're not, the, there are some people, they worship themselves and they talk about it in the end time scriptures, lovers of self instead of lovers of God. We want to follow and be obedient to what God tells us to do. That's why we have to have a sensitive, intimate relationship with the Lord so that he can speak to us. He may be asking you to Give something to that homeless person on the street. He may be telling you in church to go to a stranger and say something to them or give them something. We want to be directed and led by him to be a tool in his hand and be willing to do what he's sending us to do or what he's asking of us to do or what he's urging us to do. We need to be willing as we are willing then God is able 
to move through us and do miraculous things. I told you before about this one a man who was um, desiring deeper intimacy and desiring to be used greater by the Lord. And the Lord told him to get milk, go get, go buy some milk and some bread and eggs, or he told him what to get. And he goes, now go to this address. Guy had never been to that address. And as he was looking and driving to there, he realized it was in a bad part of town that he'd never been to because it was reputed to be very a dangerous part of town or, and he pulls up to the address and he hears a lot of screaming going on on the inside, yelling and hollering and fighting. And he's like, I don't want to go in there. But he knocks on the door and an angry looking man like whips open the door. What? You know? And he just held the groceries out and said, God told me to bring these to you. The man was speechless because the whole reason the fight was going on was the wife was a believer. This family was struggling financially. I guess the, the husband was out of work. He's feeling worthless and screaming and hollering and they're, they're in an argument with each other. She wants him to find the Lord and all this other stuff. And he's angry and saying, <clears throat> what kind of a God allows children to starve and allows me to lose income, you know, our family to lose income and blah, blah, blah. And then here comes all the essentials that they needed for the children. He was speechless. It brought him to his knees and the man wound up giving his heart to Christ. I know I shared that story this year. I know I did. So for those who heard it, for those who's hearing it for the first time, be blessed by that. But um, that's the kind of relationship I want to have to be able to do that and to be obedient to do it. And to do that, we have to walk humbly before the Lord. That is where we will truly find our fulfillment and satisfaction in following him and doing his will. When we do that, we are going to be blessed because we're walking in obedience. We're doing as he's asked us to do. He does what he says he will do. He always backs up his word. That's why it's impossible to outgive God. If he says give and it comes back, pressed down, shaken together and flowing over. When you give, you're going to get the, you don't give to get, but you give in obedience as the Lord leads you. He doesn't need your money because he owns everything, but he wants you to put him first, not to put your trust in the almighty dollar, not to use that almighty dollar to uh, blow it on sin and to not be wise with it. He wants you to use it for your advantage so that you are set up for success. So you remember the parable of the talents and these other things. So when he's leading you to do something, he wants those blessings for you. And he always does what he says he's going to do because he can't lie. <laughs> Hebrews 6, 18, I quote it all the time. It is impossible. He's given us his promise and his oath. And these things we can be certain of. It is impossible for it is impossible for God to lie. So those who have confidence, uh, those who believe him can have confidence that, you know, look it up. Hebrews 6, 18. But we have to get to that place where there is no doubts at all. And when you hold on to the scriptures that God's plan is he's for us, he's not against us. He wants to give you, he wants to prosper you and give you hope in a future. Prosper, by the way, does not mean you're going to be a multimillionaire. I think God appoints people for that level of financial success, not because they're extra special, but because they can be trusted to do what he wants with that, with that. He hasn't called everybody to be that, okay? But he wants you to prosper. He wants you to have everything you need with the ability to be generous later on. He wants you to be wise. God's people should be the wealthiest one on the earth. We should, if we're doing everything that he's asked us to do, all right? But reciprocity works whether you are a believer or not. It's one of those laws like gravity. When you give, it comes back. That's the law of reciprocity. You have philanthropists who are not believers who give and their wealth continues to multiply because that's reciprocity. We have to trust God in this, not let our brain get in the way. We give, God does it, he comes back, okay? And we need to walk, or his, his uh, benefits come back. You have to get to the place where you know that in your knowing place and that you have confidence in it. And you're not trying to con your way into a loophole. How can I get out of doing this? Stop it. Just do what he said. Don't look for the loophole. 
Okay, do what he said. When you walk in obedience, you put others before you as he says to do here. Grace. Put others first before yourself. Be generous. Be kind. All the things he tells us to do in the word, when we do them, we reap that blessing. And I want to be in a place where I've positioned myself, where I know I've done everything God has asked me to do. And then I wait because I know God will never fail me. All his words prove to be true. So let's pray. Now, for further study, I'm going to say these and pause, okay? Luke chapter 12, verses 33 to 34. And Luke chapter 18, verse 22. These are all scriptures to sacrificially put others first in the here and now. Earnings earns unimaginable rewards for you in heaven forever. And this is, see these scriptures, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Add those to your study list today. I think you'll enjoy it. Now let's pray. King of heaven, we want to live every day with the knowledge of eternity set deep in our hearts. We want to stand on the confidence of knowing you can't fail us. You will always do what your word says you would do because you are a great and awesome God who always fulfills his covenants and keeps his promises, as it says in Daniel 9.4. Thank you, Father. Help us, Father God, to make the choices that lead us closer to you. Help us to be humble and to think of others first, but also to have balance in that, that we not be so dramatic and over the top that we're sacrificing everything of ourselves and then tearing our own health down and our own sleep and, and running ourselves ragged into the ground. That's not what you want. You want us to have that balance. Help us to be sensitive to hear your voice that still small voice that will tell us, go to this person or go to that person or go to the grocery store and pick this up. Now take that to this person. We want to be led by you so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus to people who need to know you, who need to see a miracle, even if it's the miracle of somebody they don't know showing up on their doorstep with a gallon of milk. We want to be, Father God, agents used by you, by your Holy Spirit, to communicate the unfathomable love of a heavenly father. Help us to walk humbly before you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Um, today is another busy day. I got the main Christmas tree and I will do a, a house Christmas tour once I'm finished getting all the decorations up. Uh, I didn't do a fall decor tour. I, I, I didn't put up as much fall this year. I just wasn't, I guess I just wasn't feeling it, but, uh, <clears throat> I will be doing a tour of Christmas. Yesterday we went out and bought, I didn't get a, a real tree. My husband and I, you know, the, the real trees were being a concern to him. He was worried about them drying out and being a fire hazard. I said, okay, I can't disagree with that. So we did go and purchase a tree yesterday for my patriotic tree. I have a patriotic tree in my dining room up on a table, even though it's a five foot tree, because I want everyone to see it from the door when they come in. And, um, uh, that has to be decorated today. Lots of things fall needs to be put away. And, you know, we did do a lot of cleaning and purging and taking things to the thrift store <clears throat> and then put, put containers away up in the attic where they belong instead of being stacked in corners. So that's done. And I'm really feeling relieved about that, but, uh, there's still a lot of organizing and especially as we've pulled everything out, some things have been moved around. So I'm going to have to be busy the next um, three days um, today and whatever, but I'm also today going to help someone in my Bible study, a gal named Maureen. Please keep her in your prayers. Um, she wasn't feeling well, went to the doctor and they found lesions on her liver, lungs, kidneys, 
and there's even, she had to have a biopsy yesterday on the liver and she's very concerned as I would be. Okay. And if there's cancer, which is a possibility, that's very scary because that means it's spread. So, and on top of that, her landlord sold the house. She was renting a room in a house and, um, the landlord is selling the house. And so everyone had to be out by tomorrow, December 1st. So in the midst of dealing with this and being in the hospital, having a couple of overnight hospital stays, she's had to pack up her belongings and find a place to live. So thankfully, someone else in our Bible study group had a room and was interested and it was in the price range that she needed. And so most of her things have been moved over and it's a furnished room, but we have to organize her stuff today. And she's just not in a place to do it. So me and my sister Winnie are going to be going over today at 11 o'clock to help her put her things away and organize the room so that she can find it while she's resting. She had the procedure yesterday and had to be watched for 24 hours. So she was able to stay with a friend who is also going to be providing assistance for her. So I was thankful for that. And I said, Lord, you just have to do what you have to do for Maureen. So please pray for her. Uh, I'm looking for miracles. I'm completely looking for miracles because I know God can do it. And he, I've, I know people, okay? I know people who were had 30 days to live. And I've shared this story in depth, you know, a couple of years ago. But I can go briefly. It was a former pastor's wife. She's with Jesus now and has been for several years, as was as is our pastor uh, from back in the day. Both of them are with the Lord. But uh, she was going through um, radiation treatment for thyroid cancer. And she was in her 30s and he was active duty Air Forces before he was a believer and before he was our pastor. And they had three small children. And so they had to fly her from Turkey, which is where he was, to Germany to get the medical treatment. And so she was away from her family, away from her children, going through these scary things. And in, during that process of the radiation, they discovered that her kidneys were in the front of her body instead of in the back. And instead of there being two, it was a, it was a birth defect, they were in one big mass. And so the doctors decided... Uh, at some point and this, they may have come back to the States at this point. I believe they did. They decided to do a surgery to separate the mass and put them in the place where they belonged. I guess they felt where they were, where it was going to pose a danger. Well, in that process, I don't know specifically what happened, but one, one of the kidneys died and the doctor had to remove it. And then the other one, which wasn't fully functioning anyway, because it was defective from birth was now doing the work of two. And then because she was a radiation patient, had had radiation, she wasn't a candidate for transplant. So I'm sure there's a lot of time in between that radiation treatment and this issue with the kidneys. Um, there was a lot of time, but her kids were still small. She was in her thirties. And they basically told her, you have 30 days to live. We can't do anything for you. There's no pill or medicine or treatment we can give you that's gonna change this because it's defective from birth. I don't know that uh, moving the leaving them where they were or moving the kidneys would have made a difference. Okay, so it's not like malpractice now, but she basically was told you're going to die, get your affairs in order, figure out what you're going to do with your children, your husband. You know, you guys have decisions to make, and uh, sorry, we'll keep you comfortable. So she's on all these pills to help her to stay comfortable and reasonably pain free, I guess, and. They, had a, they, they were attending a church that didn't believe in miracles or divine healing. They thought that was something for when Jesus was here on this earth. So there's no hope there either. So the friend of theirs invited them to a special event, a charismatic event, and she, she agreed to go with her husband, our pastor, uh, not our pastor at the time. And, you know, they walk in and there's people praising the Lord, raising their hands. They didn't know what the heck that was. So they're like looking like, what is this? They listened to the message, which was good. and It was stirring in her. But then they started doing the altar call. And as people were going up to the altar, some of them were being slain in the spirit. For those of you who don't know what that is, they get prayed for. It's not someone shoves them down. But the power of the Lord comes upon somebody in such a strong way that their physical body can't hold itself up. And they it looks like they faint. 
but they're not fainting. Their body just could not take the anointing that surged through them. So they're like, okay, we're out of here. Our, then not our pastor. He grabs her hand and said, we're going. So he leaves. They, they start heading out the door because they've never seen anything like this. And the friend that invited her followed her out. And he said, wait, 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 God's got something for you. Please, will you let me pray for you? And he asked her the simple question of, do you believe that Jesus healed people when he was here on this earth? Yes, I do. And he shared the scripture. Forgive me, I don't know the, the source, but he said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe it's in Revelation. And shared that scripture with her. And he says, so if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he healed people when he was here, do you believe that he can heal you? And that was a struggle because she'd been brought up in a religious teaching that said that didn't happen. But she couldn't deny the truth that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So she said, yes, I do. And as they began to pray for her, she said, that was the last thing I remember. Her hands had shot up. She said, I understood why the hands went up because it was just an automatic worship to God. Then she went down and there's Jerry, <laughs> her husband, later our pastor, who's like, what just happened to my wife? She's on the floor. So when she finally comes up from that, she said she felt the power of God go through her. She knew she was healed. And because she felt differently inside, physically, he's like, well, you're not stopping to take those pills. And I want you going back to that doctor to get yourself checked because he thinks something medically happened to her when she fell down. So she goes to the doctor, the one who had taken the kidney out. And, you know, I'm, I'm really chopping the story up because I want to I don't want to hold you up too much. But she goes in and the doctor with pity and, you know, compassion. OK, I'll go through and take your. She asked for x-rays again. She says, I, be I believe I've been healed and I want to prove it. And they're like, mm, okay, poor thing. All right, I'll do it for her because she's dying. And so she goes through the, the process and then you see the doctor or the nurse comes out and says, I'm sorry, we're going to have to do those tests again. And so she's like, okay, so they take the x-rays again or MRI pictures or whatever it is. And um, I believe it was x-rays. And then... You see the doctor scurrying back around and he's checking and it took three hours. It should not have taken three hours to do those things, those films, but there was no denying. And so he brings her in and he puts up a film and she, he said, do you recognize this? And she said, well, yes, that's from my last visit. That's my body. You see the space where my kidney's gone and there's the one piece that's left. And he said, okay, he took that down and he put up a new one. He goes, tell me what you see. And she says, well, I see two kidneys. I see this and that. And he goes, that's your film today. I don't even know where that other one, kid that kidney came from because I took it out. But there were two perfect brand new kidneys in her body where before there had only been one and it was malformed. These were perfectly formed, fully functioning kidneys. She didn't know she no longer had to take any of those medications anymore. God had healed her completely and she never had a problem with her kidneys for the rest of her days on this earth. Never. So when I'm praying for someone to be healed, that's the place I'm coming from. This isn't a great story I heard, like the man who was told by God to go get the groceries and take it to the family. That is a wonderful faith filled story, but I don't know that man. I don't know that family. For all I know, somebody could have just made that story up as a way to build someone's faith. But I'm sure it's true. I'm sure it's fine. But I had no connection to anyone in that story. I have a personal connection to this family. They were Colleen and Jerry Hannah. My daughter Hannah was named for them. <laughs> so there is a connection. There is a connection. And... I know he did it for her and he did it until her, her body was healed and whole in this area until the day he took her home to heaven, which is our reward. All right. So please agree with me in prayer for Maureen's healing. Okay. All right. You guys have a wonderful Saturday. God bless you and bye until next time.